हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द लीला एकेडमी ऑफ न्यूरोलॉजी इन माय टॉक टुडे आई शेड बी टॉकिंग टू यू अबाउट ए वेरी कॉमनली डन ऑपरेशन बाय ऑल यूरोलॉजिस्ट अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड दैट इज ट्रांस सेक्शन ऑफ द प्रोस्टेट नाउ इट इज विद द एडवेंट ऑफ बाईपोलर टेक्नोलॉजी people are venturing to do transurethral section of glands which are more than 80 cc in the volume when you have to do this kind of a procedure i am here by recommending to you that you should do a pre trp mri or ct of the prostate with catheter in c2 normally the prostate gland is oriented around the urethra like this in some patients we have noted that anterior part of the gland is smaller it's more fibrous or it is even more smaller just that fibrous tissue while in other patients we noted that the posterior part of the gland is smaller and the the bph tissue lies only in the anterior part of the prostate and in such a case when bph process starts the gland may grow like that more towards the sphincter or the gland may grow like that more towards the bladder so these are the patterns of growth which happen in the prostate again a normal prostate which looks like that the the gland may grow in the posterior part more into the bladder creating what's known as intravesical protrusion or the gland may grow more peripherally like a pumpkin and not creating any intravesical protrusion so friends this kind of differential growth of bph within a single prostate is a common phenomena when you have it larger than 70 cc in the volume so my submission to you is that can an mri or a ct help us in knowing this differential pattern of the growth of the prostate or in other words the shape of the prostate gland prior to doing a trp we attempted doing mri of patients like that and it was possible to see the prostate very nicely as you can see here but the location of urethra the course of urethra uh, was not all that straight forward for us to see in the hard films in the lateral profile also you can see prostate gland nicely but where is the urethra coursing through the prostate gland was not nicely appreciated here is an example of a patient whose prostate has grown like that intracycally more as you can see here and in either section you can see the upper part of the urethra also in the center of the prostate gland and in the sagittal view the prostate has grown intravesically but where is the urethra in this patient in either patient in a sagittal view you will see the prostate has grown significantly inside the urinary bladder and when we approached the radiologist trying to find out where is the urethra they said this is here the urethra is coursing so now you can see that that more than 80% of the prostatic volume is located anterior to urethra not posterior to urethra so if you were to do a transurethral resection of this patient you can anticipate the technical difficulties that you will face now since the operation of turp is performed through the urethral lumen the resectionist has to know the distribution of the prostatic tissue in reference to urethra how much is lateral to urethra how much is dorsal to urethra how much is ventral to urethra in all directions i have to know the extent of the growth of the prostate if this is the orientation of the resectoscope sheet in the prostate and uh, in the light color we have shown you the bph process involving the transition zone that's the way you resect the tissue one chip another chip and another chip 
you are working on the prostate from within the urethra and you go from center to periphery and in transurethral resection you have to be careful about the capsular injuries so you all the time keep wondering how deep to go but if the patient's prostate has grown up inside the bladder intracecically or one lobe has grown more than the another lobe you can see that endoscopically because change in the prostatic anatomy has happened towards the urethra right so it's causing urethral displacement inwards and when you see this on a video like such as one here this is verum montanum and you move on you will see one lobe is protruding more and the one another lobe is small and you can take your scope all around it you realize the one lobe has grown quite significantly so when the growth is intraurethral you can assess it but when the growth pattern of the prostate is such that it is going more peripherally like this then looking inside the endoscopic vision will not help you you therefore need a three dimensional imaging so in this coronal section you will appreciate a shaft of the catheter in the center and you know that right lobe and left lobe have identically grown and there is a minimal intravesical protrusion when you do a sagittal imaging you can always see in reference to catheter how much is the tissue anterior to the catheter how much is the tissue posterior to the catheter another sagittal imaging of the prostate where you will see that the amount of tissue anterior to catheter is similar to the amount of tissue posterior to the catheter and when you take a idea about the growth please do it at three levels like that one which is close to bladder one in the middle of the prostate and another close to the apex of the prostate in a coronal section same concept towards the bladder neck middle of the prostate and towards the apex of the prostate in this patient you will see that the anterior tissue is very small hardly any and it is all the tissue posterior to the catheter in this patient you will see that there is more growth of the bph tissue anterior to the catheter particularly towards the area of the apex and in this patient you will see that there is hardly any tissue in the posterior part of the prostate it's all anterior alone so it is more relevant to know how much is the tissue in the anterior part of the prostate because if you leave it behind inside after a turp then patient will not void well to give you another example here is the prostatic enlargement and you will see a foley balloon inside the bladder but you don't see the catheter right so you don't know how much is the tissue anterior to the catheter how much is the tissue posterior to the catheter and the moment you take this kind of section you know there is very little tissue anterior and close to 80 90% bph volume is located posterior to the catheter and then you do these three sections and take a cross sectional view that's what you will see in transfer section also you will be able to appreciate where is the catheter going through the substance of the prostate you can see all prostatic tissue posterior to the catheter in a middle section that is the arrangement and in the apical section this is the arrangement so at all the levels of the prostate vertically you should take an idea about the distribution of tissue all around the urethra in another example here this is the prostate in a sagittal view and that's the catheter more tissue is anterior to the catheter and when you do a cross sectional imaging you will see catheter lying posterior and all the tissue anterior to the prostate like that in another example you will see a big part of prostate growing inside the bladder like a middle lobe this is the another picture of the large middle lobe and this is a coronal view and you will see the catheter at one place the majority of the middle lobe which is protruding inside the bladder has grown from below of the prostate and that's the catheter and that's the degree of intravesical protrusion so you can have such a big middle lobe in some patients the second question that comes to the mind of the resectionists is 
that yes mri has helped me knowing the shape of the prostate gland mri has helped me knowing the differential directions the prostatic growth has taken in a particular case can it also help me in knowing the architecture of the prostate gland the tissue characteristics of the prostate gland and we have noted in some patients that you will see some areas which are not enhancing with the contrast now what are these areas in another patient prostate typical prostatic enlargement in some areas showing you less dense areas what are these areas i hope you know that when the prostate gland enlarges and it gives rise to acute urinary retention there are two reasons of prostatic enlargement suddenly one is the infarct within the prostate gland because of which the gland suddenly swells up and second reason is acute inflammation in the prostatic gland infarct is a ischemic event the blood flow to the infarcted zone will be less the inflammation is hypervascular situation blood flow in the prostate will be more so if you do a diffusion weighted imaging of prostate you will know whether in this zone the blood flow is less or in this zone the blood flow is more and if i were to show you concept wise these are the areas of infarcts which take place in the prostate gland and prostate gland is suddenly enlarged what we have observed that in these patients if you keep catheter for a weeks time or some time the infarcted area and peri infarct area the swelling the vascular congestion regresses and prostate becomes smaller now if you do in these patients diffusion weighted imaging this is the mri of a patient where you will notice in one lobe an area which is not enhancing in this patient you will see although there is no catheter here but you can see the direction the urethra is taking by these arrows and you will see lot of tissue anterior to the urethra more towards the apex less tissue in the posterior part but you also notice within the substance of prostate gland area which are not enhancing so either these areas are infarcted areas or these areas are areas of uh, necrosis which has taken place in this prostate gland in a diffusion weighted imaging in one view this you will see this as white areas in another view you will see that as black areas if it is area which is showing it showing restriction or diffusion so if you do diffusion weighted imaging of prostate you can know to certain degree whether there is any infarct in the prostate gland or whether there is any inflamed area in the prostate gland one will show less blood flow the other will show more blood flow so in my view if you are going to do a transurethral resection of a prostate whose weight is more than 80 cc you should do a sagittal coronal and axial imaging preferably by mri if that is not available a ct and this is going to give you some information which is relevant to you in summary the exact value is the benefit one that you know the 3d shape of the prostate gland in reference to urethra and the other benefit is that you will know the reason of prostatic enlargement on top of the standard bph process right as i said it may be infarct or it may be inflammation the value of knowing this is if you see this in a mri picture and the patient has a catheter you can ask him to wait for some time 7 days 8 days time and if he waits the gland which is looking now as 90 cc after a week it will become 60 cc or even lesser and then your transurethral resection will be easier more convenient and less morbid for the patient so i hope i have made my points clear the value of ct in such a setting so thank you very much for being with me if you have any questions please post on my email thank you very much